<laughs> They're all watching you. <laughs> I love how you're having this conversation with him. <laughs> so meaty. And the last few days, he's just been uber meaty. And the thing is, is I just put flea medication on him. And he wants to be like right under my nose. Oh. And I don't want to touch him because he's got flea medication on him. Right. <laughs> These cats, I'm telling you, they rule us. And this pandemic has only made it worse. They, they all, even more than ever, they feel like they are the rulers of this world. <laughs> Do you have cats? I don't. You have but, dogs? Uh, <laughs> no, we have, we have sheep, chickens, and, and we have ranch cats. Well, so those I chickens, guess. I tell you, the chickens are insane. Yeah. Chickens are something else. No, well, I grew up with dogs, and so to the ranch cats has been very interesting and um yeah and and then this morning i babysat my four-year-old down the road before she had to go to daycare like i was there at 6 30 this morning because her parents wow. had to go to work early and um yeah and they have a cat and it's just yeah no i have like new appreciation for cats <laughs> i don't i i give people kudos who have cats in their house because the hair is like oh my gosh yeah and and the ranch cats literally they've been at the ranch they're fixed they were strays that were like picked up you know i, I mean my sister she's in king city i don't know one was dumped at the church they couldn't find the owner and it was small Aww. and then one had another cat had babies in her yard and and they, anyway, they're, they're both females and they're both fixed. But of course, one is more friendly than the other. And the one that's not, of course, is the one that tends to get, it has like a skin is, I don't know, allergies. It's more sensitive that way. And so, yeah, good luck to me just to try and like squirt stuff on the back of its neck, you know, and. <laughs> Well, I have one I'm still trying to find. So I've got three and two, but <laughs> there's one behind this. She decided she's going to start sleeping behind the curtain. There's a little chair back there. Oh, well, that's all sudden, you'll hear somebody scratching or her little, her little collar. Goes, dingle, dingle, dingle. <laughs> <laughs> they get this place where they've got us. This is where they're sleeping. Nobody touch it. This is my spot. And they'll be like that for a while, you know, days. And then they'll change it somewhere else. Hamilton is wants to be in the chair i'm sitting in if i get oh. up to go to the bathroom i come back he's sitting in my chair oh you left it or nice and warm for him i guess or he sits here see oh. and then he tries to sneak his way over here and like yeah. i said he's got all this flea meds and then if i'm like scanning stuff and i've got paper over here i don't i don't want anything around here <laughs> he's just gonna attend the class where did you get your cats at the at the county um yeah uh you know yeah like, but they're they're how old are you, Hamilton? We got you in 2008, right? Oh, well. Yeah. They're old. I got all three at the same time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still trying to connect to audio. Oh, that's weird. I guess we have to sing the sound of music to make her appear. Oh, the Good sound of music. Are alive. <laughs> With the sound, the sound of music, it worked. It did work. <laughs> She'll have to listen to the audio, the video to to see how our our skills of magic and and music are. The sound of music is like one of my most favorite movies of all. Time. Really, I don't think I've seen it all the way through. I mean, I know it, but right now I cry yeah. every single time. Yeah. Have you seen Sound of Music? It reminds me of my grandfather with the later hosen. Oh my gosh. Cindy's here. Well, I have some in the oven and I smelled it. I'm like, oh. Cindy's, Cindy's gone mute. So I don't know if she's really here or not. Okay. Sorry, I, oh, here. oh, there she's here. Now she's yeah. going to be with us. Okay, sorry about that. Mary called seconds before you opened the meeting and 
So yeah, she sent a message that she can't make it. She had a friend had a motorcycle accident. Oh, Mary, no, I met Mary, my Mary. Mary oh, Jean. oh, the other Mary isn't going to make it. Cyber. She said she had an emergency. Uh, yeah. Friend had a motorcycle accident. They're alive, but they're going to drive to go see them. And she says that her homework is all done. Tamberly and her both said their homework is all done. Uh huh. Both of them said so, which I guess yeah. is good because we can have a shorter meeting today because it's just the three of us and then and then it continue. recording and then they can do their thing next week. And right. that'll be it'll be nice because we won't have it all done at once. And I so absolutely I have to leave a little bit before three because and uh, I have an appointment across town at three thirty. So oh, and so does Cindy has an appointment too. So that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have to leave by about quarter of. So so we'll get started. Oh, perfect then. So yeah. why don't we start with show and tell? And I didn't decide who's going to go first. So who wants to go first? Well, it sounds like you really have something to say. So why don't you go first? Me? Yeah. Okie dokie, harder dokie. So what happened is it was really exciting because you know how we write to people on the internet on 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 um, Ancestry that are family members and they never respond. Right. That's just what they are, right? Yeah. So a long time ago, I changed Mark's Ancestry account and I'm his, you know, I, I run it and right. I changed it to, I put a very friendly looking photo of him up as the, hey, Pat. Hello, Patrick. Is he coming in to? Oh, I pass. He's bringing my phone back. He finished the conversation with. Oh, with, uh, with uh, Mary. Okay. So I put a very friendly looking picture of Mark up as his profile photo. And then as his username, I put, yeah. I put his email. And I did the same thing on my account too. So it's, so his username That's super is, smart. Is, is email. And then it says at Yahoo or gmail.com. And the reason why I did that is because I hate, messages on on ancestors of pain you know to deal with that but the other reason is because i wanted it to be crystal clear we're hoping you will contact right you know it's like here is our email do you see can you not see that email <laughs> we are expecting and hoping you will contact us by email you know so so on his account and my account that's what i did i and you've never had any problem i mean just getting really unintended emails i mean because i'd be lucky if somebody started sending me unintended emails. no i mean like spam emails that you could trace back to somebody no. selling your email address no because it's written it says mark you know and it's, it's like mark at gmail.com and it says at at uh, it's not like they can click on it it's like written get it so it's not like it's like mark m-a-r-k a-t g-mail dot d-o-t c-o-m ah okay so it's not a live link no 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 it's his username is his email so but it's Got written it. so you can't but how are they gonna know what his email is because it says at gmail.com and they I hope I hope they're smarter than a light bulb and they can figure out. <laughs> but are you telling me that Mark's live email is M A R? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I was just using that as an ex to explain to you. His real email is markmindreader at gmail.com. And that's a little harder to explain to, to say. Oh, so you have that all written out. Yeah, yeah, it's all written out. Oh, no, oh, his name isn't Mark at Gmail. That would be awesome, man. He'd be like the first person to have gotten Gmail. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm like, I, that, that was like, I was very impressed if that was it. <laughs> no, I was just using that as an example to explain. Okay. It. That's how I, how it is on his, mine is Susan Gerbeck, A-T, Yahoo, D-O-T, C-O-M is mine. So it's like saying neon light bulb, we're hoping please contact, right, right. not just send me a stupid uh, thing. And it kind of makes it a message on messenger. And it also kind of makes it a little more like, um yeah we're we're looking for your email we're we're hoping you will email us instead mm -hmm. of just like i'm off chance somebody will message but anyway it's never really worked until i think it was monday or sunday mark gets a message from this guy named bruce miller and he says and he sends a picture of mark's great grandfather and mother and his his message to us is that 
he is um he went to minnesota minnesota and he had uh, attended a family reunion a few months ago and while he was there he took pictures of every single photo he could find with his cell phone click 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 every doc like you i know i was excited so he took a picture of everything he could find every document and everything and then he came home and i guess his girlfriend i find out later his girlfriend her name is karen is a genealogy nut you know and so she taught him how to use ancestry and so he says he's just loving this he's he's learning how to use everything and he's just really immersed in it and so he's got this he's got his family tree and he's got some photos on there and he's very excited because he can see that Mark and him are related and Mark is in him share 126 cinnamorgans. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, that's like second cousin, something kind of yeah. area. So that's a lot. So uh, Mark forwards me the email and says, Hey, check this out. And I'm like, Oh, this is fantastic. You've got a live one, you know, <laughs> <laughs> of course, Mark, we're working. <laughs> yeah. Thursday, but Hey, <laughs> I know I mind I don't think I have any family really but anyway so it was nice and so he sent me so Mark forwarded it to me and then I answered the guy so him and I are answering each other back we sent about 20 emails and Mark's just like this guy keeps sending a lot of emails what's all this about you know and I said just just, just ignore it <laughs> I'll explain it so for about the last three days I have just been immersed in trying to link Mark's family to this guy's family because his family has all this photos and family history his um he's like before his mother died and she was born in 1922 she gave him you know the family history all the names of everybody she could remember and all that kind of stuff so he's got a nice little bit of history on his side but it took me probably two days you guys would be so proud of me if you were watching over my shoulder you would be like good job Susan (laughs) because I used all the skills that were taught and I learned here and it was I didn't jump to any conclusions um he's new so he had made a lot of different kinds of mistakes I could tell like you know duplicate people mm, you know taking for granted what somebody says necessarily and so he's sending me emails of stuff he's finding like, oh, look, here's a find a grave and here's a here's a this and here's a that. And he's highlighting uh, information on it. Like he'll he'll send me a biography or a story or something that somebody's got on Ancestry. And then he he's done analysis of it. He's like, see, this is says half brothers. That means there is another wife somewhere or something, you know, so uh, he's yeah. really getting in and analyzing, which is great. And then he links to another woman who is an adopted child who just recently found out she's adopted and trying to find her family. And that's all well and good, except she has no real family history. She doesn't have any background necessarily of of knowing if she's on the right track because she's totally coming in clueless. And Mm -hmm. she made, and he shows me her faith, her, her ancestry page. He says, he says, see, this coincides with all the stuff my mom told me. And I said, wonderful, but I'm going to ignore it because it's, again it's even more of a beginner lots of duplicates lots of just taking ancestry pages as as you know that's what it is she's she only joined i think a year ago and she's already got like six thousand ancestors oh, and i'm like red flag that means she's just going in and saying that's mine that's mine that's mine that's mine you know and not really looking at it so so every night i write back to this guy he writes to me and he sends me like five emails with photos and stuff in it. and i told him stop (laughs) i told him i said i'm really excited about linking you guys together but i'm not going to do it just yet until i've done all the work and so every time i pull something up and so i said i just put all his stuff to the side i just ignored it i mean in the back of my mind i'm thinking okay there's twin sisters and there's um a judge you know some of the things he told me in writing i said i'm going to ignore all that and just do ancestry research and i'm not putting it on unless i know i have something because they all you know it's the same thing they have the same freaking name uh lars peter john james you know you're like so they're from norway (laughs) and they came to iowa and iowa is a really great place to research i didn't realize it so much that because they do census in iowa off year from the other census the main census so that's like really cool 
it isn't like super detailed, but it's nice. And then also in local smaller towns, it's, it's a little easier to find people, I think. And as I'm finding things, I'm going to ans, um, newspapers.com and mm-hmm. I'm pulling up, uh, trying to find their obituary or you know, doing a search for them in there. And I'm finding out things about them and then putting it in. So um, I last night I, I linked them together. I figured out the common, you know, it's somebody was married then they had a whole bunch of kids. Then she died. He got married again in Norway. He comes over to America. They have a bunch of kids. And so Mark is descended from the first wife and this guy, Bruce, is descended from the second wife. And so, um, so you know, it, it, it's, it's there. And then I'm finding all sorts of weird things that are happening that are, I don't have answers for yet. Like uh, um, last night, I was putting the final links together so that I'd have something to be able to say to you guys. And um, Bruce, that's the guy I'm communicating with, his mother's a twin. And I went into the census and I'm looking for stuff as I'm doing their family. Her and her twin are living in a, in a, a, a girl's home in, oh. and they're 18. So I thought that was odd. Yeah. And um, their mother has died. Their oldest sister is 33 and she's got a beautiful home in um, Minnesota. And the, if you're looking at the 1940 census, you know how the 40 census leads you through things? You know, they, they're doing that like tutorial. Yeah. It says, Click yeah. here if you'd like a tour of the 1940 census. And we talked about that a long time ago. Yeah. So I yeah. went and I did a little tour and it explains things. And one of the things it had on it was a Google Street View. It says, here's the house she's living in. And you click on it, boom, there's the Google house. You know, the house. Back modern. then or now? Now. Oh yeah, but it's but it's still like well that house existed in 1940. Yeah. Where they awesome. lived. and it was a beautiful house. I did a screenshot of it so I could put it onto the um you know the the file, and she's renting, but she's there with her sisters and a brother, and her sister's husband who's a policeman, and a 13 year old brother. So she's got her siblings living in this house. They're working. Um, the kids are in school. And I know her mom's dead. And I thought, well, then I guess her father's dead by the 1940 census also. And then I'm like, well, why are her 18 year old sisters, twin sisters living in a girl's home in, in the same census? Good question. So I don't know. So, you know, but I'm finding they mentally okay. Yeah. Because it turns out, I know that this is going to be his, his mom. Cause he oh, said, wow. that's my mom. And I'm, and I know she's fine. You One know. of the twin sisters is his mom. Mm-hmm. Oh. so I don't know what's going on so I, I'm just noting it you know again I didn't want to look at anything he sent me I only want to do ancestry <laughs> right. Just, right. just the things I'm taught just putting them in one at a time and I'm noticing things like that there's another brother who's missing um, I thought oh I guess he's dead and then I find ancestry gives me like eight records for this guy who's living in North Dakota and uh with his wife and his kid and he's like a i found his obituary and he's he's started a company a farm company uh, that does chemicals and i don't know he's he's got this really nice biography he's got all this wonderful stuff from 1940 on but not a single thing mentions his father his mother where he's from nothing so i said well that's nice i can't prove he's the brother that I thought might've been dead, you know, so he could have moved to North Dakota and started a whole life and had nothing to do with anybody. That's very likely. What about North Dakota death certificate? Well, it's there, but it doesn't say anything about, I, I, well, I couldn't find his death certificate in North Dakota, or I haven't really looked hard enough, but I was looking at the obituary. And then I went back and tried to find the obituaries for the other siblings to see if they said preceded in death by or survived by. And whatever I could find didn't have it. So that mystery is just going to sit there. I mean, this is all from last night. And I was just working on it this morning a little bit. So I've, I've got a lot to do. But the bottom line is, is that I've, uh, I've, I've tied these two families together. I'm just now going to start on his emails and go one by one and look at everything he sent. The first email I've looked at is something is a find 
grave that I had on mine. I'd already found, found it, but he had analyzed it a little bit better than I had. Oh, I got hiccups. And plus there were some photos I could take. So here's, here, let me pull up. Oh, I got the dang hiccups. So did Mark know this? Mm -mm, there's nothing about him. So can you see that? Gosh, these are gorgeous yeah. women. Oh my gosh, they're like, those but, four are like. Here's the twins. Beautiful. Which ones are the twins? The ones here are the. Oh, on the end. Yeah. So wow. one of them is going to end up being his mother. So I have just started enhancing it. What I received was a faded, more faded picture. And so I've just started fixing the dots. There's a lot of little dots and stuff on here. So I got to fix You must that. be so excited when you send the restored photos back. Well, I haven't sent them back yet. So oh, and, to... and that you put the names on it. Oh, oh he God. did. He did. Oh, but well, I, this is Charlotte and Clarice. But I don't know if he, it's got Gladys and it's got Vinny. And I don't know if Gladys is the back or Gladys is the front. And mm. this is Juanita and this is Wanda. So it's exciting I mean, those are obviously questions I'm going to have to, to find out. But the thing is, is that it was so rare to have somebody reach out and say, I'm totally excited about this. Help me figure this out. <laughs> Here's pictures. How many pictures can you handle? And he's like, there's all this family stories I'd love to tell you, but I can't because I want to wait until you're ready. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. So, so my homework is, is that I was completely... Jerry and just got shoved to the side. I've got I've got stuff that's uh, in mid scan practically sitting over here to the side of covered it up so nobody my cats don't hack up on it or anything. <laughs> and it's all over there. But I went completely to this and and um, and then I've been telling Mark, okay, come here and sit down now. Let me show you. Here's what I found. And as I'm going through each brother, you know, each of these siblings, and there's probably you know between the two marriages twelve. 14 people you know i'm going through them and then i'm going through the family i'm not going into depth i'm not going into like the grandchildren and great grandchildren i'm just going like here's this brother who came from norway here's his wife here's the kids he had and then i might look at the kids a little bit too and then i'll go to the next brother and do the same thing and that's what i've been doing but one of them oh my gosh it was so sad because um he and his wife were in iowa and they're they're farmers in a small the second little... wife or the first wife oh no this is a totally different brother oh, but this okay. is a story I, I found out so I'm, I'm looking at it and then it says his I noticed him and his wife died on the same day I'm like uh -uh. oh that's yeah. and they were in their 60s so it wasn't like mm. you know some random thing in their 80s or something so I went and I looked and uh turns out they died by hitting a train in the car. Oh, no. And so they don't have, you know, they didn't have these crossing guard things in Iowa where in the 19, it was actually 1958, I think. So then I go and I've got answers. I've got newspapers.com. So I go to newspapers.com to see the obituary and I read about their funeral and stuff. And then you go back a day or two because you know that's going to be front page news and there's yeah. pictures of the car all mingled. And oh. then it's thankfully black and white and then oh they they hit it bad oh it was awful and then it said that she was on her they were on her, their way to go to a family's house where her her relative was going to do her hair mm. and it was just so sad i'm like they're just gonna go get her hair done at her sister-in-law's house or something you know and they hit a train the train didn't hit them they hit the train i don't know how that happened but it, it's just really sad. So, out? I mean, how do you hit a train? I don't know. You, you go to hit the brake and you hit the gas pedal and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that might be it. So it was a very like sad. Wheeze moment. I don't so know. then I found, you know, because because as I'm going through and I find pictures and there's this little blonde headed, beautiful toe headed little boy with, and he's got all this, um, embroidery it's a family picture it's got embroidery around here and, and i go oh look i think that's like norwegian you know it looks to me like it would be norwegian and he's like six years old and i'm thinking you're gonna run into a train someday <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh that is weird oh it is awful isn't it yeah. you know to know his future as i'm looking at him in the picture oh, that is weird so so anyway so that's what happened i am very close to as i as i said after i hang up with you guys today i will go through the emails one 
at a time. And then after I've gone through the email and done everything with the email, then I'm going to have to put it in archive the email because I don't want them just sitting at me. And that's, it's like, you got to be really organized with you when you have somebody who's sharing a lot. You yeah. Be like, okay, I'm putting this in a little box and I'm not going to do anything with it until I'm ready. And then you go and you say, okay, what did you send me? And I'm going line by line saying, okay, yeah, that checks out. This checks out. Oh, here's a picture. Download that. Next line, next line, next. And, and then when it's everything's off the email he sent, I'm putting it in until a special folder of the conversation I'm having with him. So I won't look at it again, but it's there if I do find like I need to. And then next email. That's how I do things. I'm really methodical. Mm-hmm. Annoying thing. Because I want to jump ahead. I want to, I want to see what happens with these siblings, these twins in this girl's home. And <laughs> so I want to know what happens. He and Mark are, have you figured out if you've got the common ancestor is the father of the two common ans- I've got the common ancestor and He's, he's trying to tell me stuff that I don't think is true. He's trying to say there's only one Lars and, and they're con- and they're combined. And, and I'm like, I think there are two, you know, and, and so uh-huh. I'm trying to hold firm because I'm trying to prove it. The other thing is, is there are two, Mark Sanster's sister's name is Peter and it's Peter T. Brown. Last name is Brown. <laughs> Peter T. Brown. And in some places you see the T is actually an L or a P, you see um, different places. The problem is Peter T. Brown has a full brother named Peter. So they named their children Peter, John, Peter, James. It's like, why do you have to name him Peter? I mean, there's other names out there. They're living children. They raised families. It wasn't like a child died and you said, oh, I like mm-hmm. Peter so bad. We're going to name our next child, Peter. So he what told- was after grandpa, Peter, so-and-so. And what was after uncle? Maybe, Peter, but he's thinking or... reverse the names and the kids throughout their lives use their name as Peter. So that's another confusion is you got to be very careful. And, and the first Peter, his, his middle initial, like I said, sometimes it's L, sometimes it's P, sometimes it's T. And the other brother- <laughs> but I know this to be a fact, and this is really a story he told me right at the beginning. I remembered. He says his mother, this would be this would be his Bruce's mother's uh, uncles. So like really she she knew them. She actually knew these Peters. And she said the family but they're not relatives to Mark. If yeah, they're, they're, well, yeah, they're his, they're his relatives. So the joke is, she says in the family was there was Pete and repeat. Oh, funny. So when I found these two Peters, I'm like, that makes sense. That story makes sense. I don't know why they did it, but it makes sense. But I like, again, <laughs> I have to be very methodical and, and cross it off. I'm like, is this really the Pete I'm looking for? Is this the other Pete? And there's another Peter in, in uh, oh, yeah. with almost the same um, birthday who lives in um, Philadelphia at this time. And so Ancestor keeps trying to give me the Philadelphia stuff. And I'm like, mm. they have moved to Philadelphia. <laughs> so it's a good thing you have skills because this is, sounds complicated. Well, it's, it, if I was, distracted you know trying to do it like 30 minutes a day or something and I picked it up every week I think it would be really hard but I'm I'm going at it with like a few hours of solid like concentration with just my cat to distract me and you're just really trying and Cindy taught us a lot we really Deirdre we know a lot more than most people do I don't think we realize how much we're we're skilled in this kind of stuff I just, right. I think, I think that as I look at other people's work, I, I realize, okay, we got, we got this. So yeah. question. Yeah. Did Mark, did he already know his heritage was Norwegian? Well, when I met him 12 years ago or something, he told me he was Scottish. And so when we did go to Scotland twice and each time he's like, oh, my family's here for a night. And then well, maybe got, he is part Scottish. Well, we got our DNA stuff back and he's almost entirely Norwegian. Oh, mm-hmm. 
And so a little Scottish, I, I'm more Scottish than he is. And so we did go to Norway and I don't remember him mentioning at all when we went to Norway that he's Norwegian. I asked him, I said, a couple of days ago, I said, when we were in Norway, did you remember that you were Norwegian? Because I don't ever remember you saying, it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mentioned it. I'm like, oh, I don't quite remember that. <laughs> so I don't think he realized how strong of a tie he had to Norway at all until he got to um until we got his ancestry back and then then I started putting the family tree but I've done his family tree but it was just like you know to grandpa and grandma you know that far and then I just kind of said oh here's where they are these people are in Iowa they came from Norway here's these others from Utah they're Mormon here's this other group that came from you know Scotland or whatever and I just did like the basics because he wasn't that interested so I said you know I'd rather work on my family yeah. <laughs> or something so um, okay so this was this is his great grandpa that came from norway norway wait his mother his mother yeah father so yeah i think so so great grandmothers so his mother's father third. yeah so his grandmother's father. his okay. grandmother's father is the common answer i think so or is it his grandmother's father's his grandmother's father's father uh, i'd have to look and if i do i'll get distracted but anyway so. so what what is his cousin relationship is are they second or third or i i haven't said to figure it out but i think it will be okay lars let me glance i'll take a glance because otherwise i will steal the whole hour um jacob so it is, oh no, it's, it's closer than I thought. Okay. So Lars T. Brown, 1835, Norway, had two marriages. The first marriage, the first child is Peter. And that's Mark's. Okay, so Peter, okay, so Peter, oh yeah. So Peter had Adelia and Adelia had Betty and Betty had Mark. Okay, Peter had oh, who? And that's Peter had Adelia as a daughter. Yeah. yeah. And then Adelia had Betty. Okay. And Betty had Mark. Okay, so Adelia is one of the twins. No. It was okay, let me go. So the twins are the second marriage, right? Yeah. So Lars, oh, okay. going back to Lars again, uh -huh. his next marriage, he had a child named Jacob. Okay. And Jacob had one of the twins. I don't remember which one. And then that twin had Bruce. So they're not the same generation. No. How old is this guy? I don't know. Well, Mark's from the oldest child. He's descended from the oldest child. And oh. Bruce is descended from the second marriage oldest child. But still, there'd be like 10 years or something, maybe. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far to find out who he is. Okay, but, but the point being, let's see. So, so there's a second marriage. So there's a half in there somewhere. Yeah, well, just a minute. So those are Sims. Those are first cousins, second. So he's like second cousins once removed or third cousins, something like that. And the well, DNA. that's what the DNA, the DNA, you know, when I saw it was 126 Cinemorgans, yeah. it said second cousins. And I said, okay. okay. Or, and then you click on it and it gives you like yeah. right, right, half five cousins. different other combinations. Yeah. Oh. Third cousins, right. first once removed half right. yeah just in case there's another generation but that makes sense so so that sounds like about 100 100 cinemorgans doesn't it i guess i, I i've never i you know it's a half that. that's surprising yeah. so does mark have siblings he had a brother who died 
and he didn't have much contact with them. The other thing that I, I should mention really quick is when I was telling Mark all this information, Mark was like, I want to know what happened to my cousins that I knew, that I grew up with, that I knew them. He didn't like them very much, but he, he knew them. They were kind of his age. I said, well, I really haven't done much with that. And he goes, well, can't you figure that out instead of this? Other- like a Facebook thing. Yeah, well, so I did go and I spent a few hours and I found out um, they're they're fairly similar in age to him, like four or five years apart, and tried to find him. And it was it was interesting. It was, it was a very fascinating little snippet of that person, those people's lives. I didn't find them completely. There's they they were in L.A. and Glendale area, and it looks like a part of the problem is is when you're in Glendale or LA or Philadelphia or any of these things, you get like a little tiny thing in the newspaper, if at all. Oh. And his family didn't do a lot of, um, it doesn't look like they did a lot of that, you know, you know, our father died this week and he, he had a cold and, you know, and then next thing we know, and mm. this blessed guy who did all these amazing that's, things. That's so where those obituaries. Hmm? That's where death certificates come in handy. Yeah, if you can get the dang thing. So, oh, yeah. So I did find sort of his family. I tried Facebook and I didn't, I, I, I couldn't find them. Um, there was too many choices, too many. Oh, yeah. So Mark's cousins would be the children of Betty's siblings. Yes. And how many siblings did Betty have? Betty had, well, well not her. Okay, I got that wrong. Betty had one brother and he had no kids, but uh, Adelia, she had two sisters and they had kids. Okay. Well, you did catch some breaks there. And I did, yeah. And, and even better is Mark kept telling me about this, this family of three kids. And then last night, finally, he said there were four kids and he remembered the name. And I found their high school pictures on three. <laughs> kids. So you go to high school, they went to Hollywood High School. And so I found their pictures of them from the 60s and the 70s, you know, mm-hmm. long hair and stuff. And so I'm like, are these the cousins you're thinking of? And he's like, yes, that is definitely them. But I couldn't find them on Facebook. And even though I looked, but, you know, I got close, but I, I found four and I've got high school pictures for three of them. So <laughs> they exist. <laughs> wow. It was just fun. You know, nothing happened in the Gerbic line, nothing happening with any of that, but. But the homework assignment I got when I get to that part, that was yeah. very interesting. It was fun to, to do that. But okay, and, what about um, what's his name? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm throwing a blank. The one you're working on, what year? Oh, are Jerry you? Andrews. Uh, yeah, so I'm at 1978, and I'm almost finished scanning it. I can scan all of those, and I have. A little pile of envelopes to do so. What time did he, what year did he die? 2007. So I got 30 years. <laughs> oh, 29 years to go. So that's so terrible. <laughs> I know, but I, it's nice to be able to put him to the side for a little bit. So yeah, I, I haven't gotten much further than 1978. What so I was you've got several things going. Yeah, so. it is well, fun. I, I, and, and our garage is being worked on. It's almost done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say, can we come over and see it at some point? Come over after, when you get back from the doctor's office, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. They're almost done. We're going to hire a um, mudder, the person who's going to do the med. Right. That's the next thing. Hopefully next week, we'll have that person hired. And then that should be done by the following weekend. So not this weekend, but the following weekend. And then the whole thing should be done a few days after that. The electrical take took the most time. Just try and decide where to put the electrical. Yeah. I think you're going, it's going incredibly fast. Well, it was supposed to be done in May. So it felt like well, you put everything uh, in the in my house. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, here we go. Zoom. Mm, okay. You want well, that, but thankfully, I'm not doing that. That's happening outside. Who wants to go next? That was a long show until sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I, I had a question and it went out of my mind. What was it? I don't know. Um, yeah. So have you like started it? Well, no, you have a tree for Mark's stuff, right? Oh yeah. I've had that for a long time. 
Right. So, but I just ignored it. Yeah, no, I know. And so does this guy have a tree? Yeah. Full of potential errors. Some, I, I think okay. it's fairly good because he's taking it from his mom. Ah, okay. So, and you know, before she died, she gave him a lot of good information that's good. Okay. I think, and then he's had a ton of photos, which I'm excited about. So I. And his mom is one of the twins. One of the twins, yeah. Okay. So I think that what he has is probably okay, but it's all, um, you know, maybe grandparent, up to the grandparent level. Right. But again, they're from Norway. They really didn't have anything beyond Norway. I mean, it's like they're born in Norway, came to America, and, and then everything's not Norway. Current. Yeah, everything's current. So See, it's it, that hard. When you do, or if you do try to do Norway, then it gets, I think that's one of those countries where the name of the child takes on the name of the father. Oh, yes. So what? Like Lars son, or let's see how, I, I'm not really good at this. I don't have it. So I haven't mastered it. But there but is it, a thing. Yeah, so, so Jacob's son is, somebody Jacob's son is the son of Jacob. Get Somebody. it, Jacobson? Something like that. Johnson. Oh. Yeah. So the, oh. the last name changes generationally. Oh. But I don't, I mean, you need to learn oh, it. I don't. Amazing. Well, we did see that one document when, when this Lars came over, his last name was Brown, but so, somewhere else it's written that it's a much more longer name. It's Brown, Brown B R U N T V E D T. Rintvold. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, that, then that's it changed to Brown. You go to um, familysearch.org, look up under Norway, and they'll talk about naming patterns in there somewhere. Oh, name as many as you can, Peter, as possible. That's what you do. Right? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Is that part of the naming pattern? Lars, Peter, John, Anna, and James. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's name. Yeah, no, you don't have any other names in the family. If you have extra kids, just keep repeating it. <laughs> you, you study on that. I don't know it, but I do know that there's a problem with it. Well, just think going forward, all the names that people name their children now, it's going to oh. be like Michaela spelled 25 different ways. <laughs> yes, um, right. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, the yearbook's going to have it misspelled. The newspaper's going to have it misspelled. You never, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Anyway, so I just threw that in to mess with you. I'm writing, <laughs> down. I'm writing it down. Because I don't know what it is exactly, but I know it's an issue. Yeah, because I did a thing, a talk or whatever on naming patterns and that, that mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's neat that this little class of ours with five people, we're, we're getting into an awful lot of areas, which is nice because you didn't think we'd get yeah. to. See, I, and I remember thinking, well, this doesn't pertain to any of us. And then there you go. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting to find one of those kids that was named, what was the name that okay, started with a B that meant Benoni? Benoni, but, waiting for but, one of those yeah. to show up, and I'm gonna be like, oh, I know this <laughs> button. Yeah. But oh, if I can cross it off, I'll go. I got my Benoni in here. I know what that means, and I'm gonna look amazing. Yeah. Smart. My, I know. Anyway, this will be interesting to see. And the other comment I was gonna make is that you've experienced what used to take you little bits. So, Susan, you're frozen. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Your your video is frozen to me. Anyway, um, what took us weeks after weeks of learning this technique and learning that thing, and now you're just going, and do, 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 do. Yeah, a few hours. are all in your head how to do that. Yeah. Mark said the same thing. He goes, oh, my gosh, look at all this stuff. And I said, you have no idea how hard it was before. This is, like, simple. Because yeah. my dad tried to do genealogy, and, and it was just... You know, and look at how much better it you are at it than him. I'm like, well, we have computers, we have ancestors. Yeah. You can't even compare it. No, no. no. Uh-uh. So you and then, the and then you have three years of working as a group and all of that involved. And so yeah. yeah. So I know when whenever I I well, I'm working, I'm working on the Kilgallons and I'm working on the children, the siblings of Pat's grandmother. And it's like I know all this because it's all right here. And oh, okay, 
now I have to write it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> taking years to do. Well, why don't you go ahead? Okay, but this, this is show and tell, ahead. right? Yeah. So yeah, so I have been working on the Kilgallons and um, and started working. I got her probate, and I, we talked. You you weren't here last week. Um, oh, Jeremy but that was an excellent video. I mean, you guys, you it was good. Yeah, I listened to it. Okay, but this was the, maybe it was the time before when there was one time where we I thought it was just Tamberly and Susan the night where we talked in excruciating detail about um, Edward Kilgallen and his wife, Catherine, and I got her obituary, or not her obituary, her probate. And then it, she leaves everything she has, which is actually considerable, um, to her children. And in the probate in three different places, it says there is no widower. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was really confusing, okay. But so, he's still alive. Wasn't that last week? Did we talk about that? Maybe it was last oh, week. Or did you remember? super in depth that must have been something else we were that trying really hard to figure out yeah, why he shows up later when oh yeah he says she's the widow yeah oh, but you guys did talk like you were trying to figure out different possibilities yeah. that was yeah. super interesting okay yeah. you did hear that part yeah so no it was and that's really good to, because they you know Tamberly and Susan were asking me questions how come this and I would yeah. say because I knew this and yeah. you so, know Tamberly and I are going to be like all over it yeah Anyway, yeah, Gary would have been been there too. I, so, I, you know, I'm thinking things. I'm like, oh, that was my question. Good, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> so anyway, there there are eight children, and I'm going. I've got the first one that I know practically hardly anything about. So I've got the research. I've got, except for I need to get some obituaries, and I think I really am gonna have to um, sign up. But anyway, um, it turns out that she and her husband traveled quite a bit. And every time they came back into the country, this was in the thirties, they're listed in the passenger list. And they're on ancestry because they're not just immigrants. Anybody coming into the country is on a passenger list, arrival list. Yeah, that would make sense, yeah. Oh my so God, they're not arriving I mean, as immigrants, they're just traveled, traveling people. And they're there like, five or six times in the 1930s. So they traveled a lot overseas, huh? Yeah, they went to South America a lot. And I think, I don't know what, what the story is on that. Some Somebody, one of Pat's sisters said something about he was a diplomat or something. Uh. But, but I don't think so. I I think he he did something to do with the organization. And I think they did traveling for the organization. I don't know. I haven't got it all figured out, but I did find them in the arrival records and the traveling records. And he actually, they actually had gone to Rio de Janeiro in 1934 and come back. And then he must have gone back to Rio de Janeiro because that's where he died in 1935. Wait, they have eight kids and they travel like they're- No, 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 no. They're one of, she's one of- the Oh, eight. she was the first one of the eight. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's the point I was going to make is the arrival records, also anybody traveling, not just the arrival of an immigrant, you know, so that she's in there. I'm going to look and up some other stuff now. In the 1930s, anyway, because, you know, different times, different things from what they track, it gives her date of birth and her place of birth. In, oh. So that's, you know, that one of those crazy. proofs of birth in place. And I knew she was born in Ohio from the 1900 census, but mm -hmm. this gave the exact town and, you know, stuff oh, like that. even better. Yeah. So it's really worth it to look at all of the documents that are associated with the person. I've seen, you know, it'll become up as a suggestion. Somebody's on an immigrant, you know, on a ship somewhere. And I usually just go, oh, that's nice. It can't be my person. They're already here. But you, yeah, you kind of yeah. think about it. They could have taken a trip. Yeah, exactly. Or had to go home to the old country because Papa died or, you know. Right. Need to we should them. consider that a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. So that was the lesson I learned from that. Um, but anyway, so I'm ready to start the writing. Uh, I have started the writing. 
<coughs> just takes a while. Yeah. So, um, so that's on that. Uh, let's see. Seems like I have another thing besides incidents. Um, okay, I sent everybody an email about the Southern California Genealogy Society having one of their free work things at 10 o'clock on Saturday. It sounded yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, and it's about the Sanborn maps. And I know we talked about those before. And Susan, you got real excited because you could find your apartment building. <laughs> anyway, oh. <laughs> they, this is supposed to be everything you need to do to work through it. So, okay. And then Monterey County Genealogy Society newsletter had a bunch of things. So the Family History Center is now open by appointment, which we knew already, but it's open Tuesday morning and Thursday afternoon, and you don't need an appointment for those. So Tuesday mornings from, I think it's, no, I guess I didn't write down the Tuesday morning, Thursday afternoon. I think it's one to four in the afternoon and nine to 12. Okay, and then I'll save a couple of these. So Roots Tech, remember, I really touted that last year. It's a really great conference they did online and then it wasn't that big a deal, but you know, maybe they improved it, but that is on um, in March. March 3rd to 5th. Down on my calendar. March? March 3rd to 5th. Of 2022? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> hey, it's September today. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. I so, refuse to let this year go past. <laughs> so we've talked about the Social Security um, application. SSI. SSI. Yeah. And it talks a little bit more about it. And it, it says it's since 1916. And the online version has some information, but if you want to get the full information from the SS5, then you have to send for it. And it has on it, like the name of the parents, and I can't remember what all, but the big thing, the name of the parents. And this is and 1930s, 36, 30 something. Because mm -hmm. it was after the Social Security Act. So I right. can help you for anybody who's okay. Well, I say 19, my notes 1916, but I definitely get things wrong. Right yeah, now. it's it's Social Security Act. Okay, in the 30s. but the point is here is that it costs you could money. find somebody in the teens, their parent, because they fill out their document in the 30s. So the point is that it costs twenty seven dollars to get it. Um, if you know the Social Security number, twenty nine. If you don't. And you think, oh my gosh, how come it's so expensive? It's because the government can't give it away free. That, um, you know, somebody spending their time looking for it. Yeah, you know, it's our taxpayer dollars. So it has to be um, paid for. It can't come out of government expenses. So, um, so that's why it costs, but it's really worth it if you're stuck because it's as the name of the parents. I'm gonna screen share while you're talking. Okay. Because you are, you're taking my thunder. Oh, I'm sorry. I also, ah. got, I also got the- um, Rock and roll. Um, let's see, where is it? I'm trying to find it now. What am I screen sharing? Did something come up? No. A jamboree, your email. Oh, no, that's not what I want. Your inbox. Okay, here we go. Okay, here it is. Ah, you got the newsletter also. You got, you became a member of Moco Genso. Yeah. Okay, there it yeah. is. Yeah, so it says from 1906 on, anyone who applied filled out that SS5. So I just want to tag on because if you're right here talking about it, I filled it out. It's got mailed out it's because it says uh place of birth city county state okay my grandfather filled this out and he was older in 1935 he was 29 so surely 
he knew by then without a doubt what city he was born in, La Blanc or Paris, because, you know, I have stuff that says one and stuff that says the other. So I'm like really, really, really hoping that I will find out. Let's hope it's not a third city, but yeah. <laughs> Um, Philadelphia and then it will have the mother's full name including the married name regardless of whether she was living or dead so uh -huh. I mean I'm pretty sure we really have her name but nevertheless it will be nice to see it and um I was so excited because I'm like oh my but then I thought you know my mom and I made this special trip to Wells Fargo to the safe deposit box and one of the things that was in it was my grandfather's wallet with like, I don't know, there was like $26. I made my mom take the money. I'm like, really, mom, take the money. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we don't need to save $26. Anyway, it had his social security card. You're not supposed to carry it in your wallet. I, I'm sure like a huge percentage of the American public still does. But you had his social security number. Yay. Yeah, so, well, but then I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't take a picture of it. I'm like, now I'm going to have to go back down again. And I don't have the key. I'm a signer, but I don't have the key because my mom still got the key. But um, anyway, that she found it at home, though, in some paperwork. So I sent it off. And I do worry sometimes on this newsletter because uh, this is the second time information hasn't been 100% correct. Oh, sure. sure. But anyway it's only $21 instead of $27 so I was happy oh, but, you know, sure. nothing ever goes down in price so how, how, how come you think it's not 27 oh because I went to the social security administration and downloaded the SSA 711 form to get the information and it has on there how much I remember when I paid 14. Yeah. And that was still too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Well, fantastic. It hopefully will take too long. Uh, oh, no. It says on here, allow four to six weeks for a reply. Yeah. It, it'll <laughs> take a while. It took a while, even however many years ago. But that's but great because you got a plan. You know what you're looking for. Yeah. You yeah. know it's the right person. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that will be her show and tell in four to six weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll look for it. Four to six weeks. Okay, that's this is early September. So kind of just to put extra time on it because there's a pandemic, the end of October ish. Right. Sometime in October, you should get it. Hopefully. It'll be a third city. I just know it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but no, please, that was good because I just did a little quick summary and you got all the good stuff. So another thing in that newsletter is that there's a look up service now at the uh, Salt Lake City Library. It, you know, how there'll be things that they'll say you have to look at the library to get it. And they have a look up service. And um, let's see, did I write down? But, but you need to know what it is, not not a, like, look in this file for such and such. You have to say, look in this file, this is the number, the blog. And, and again, that's more details there. Um, and I probably should write that up in an email or something to send off to people. But it's in that same newsletter there. I saw that. So, and then, well, if you've got a newsletter, that means you're a member now, right? Right. So there's the not, Let's see, on October 7th, so it's um, the meeting on Zoom is going to be bet better Google and YouTube searches. And it's uh, Dana, Dana, what's Dana's last name? Dana, I can't remember, but she's really good. So, so if you were inclined, I was thinking I would maybe go to that myself because I don't know how to do YouTube very good. So... Um, speaking of YouTube, um, Susan, the, when you're recording the meetings, they go out to YouTube like anybody could see them? 
I put them on my YouTube channel. Because I was thinking, especially last week, and maybe you should stop recording for a minute. Um, and everybody's going to wonder what? what was it that said? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. It cost okay. five bucks, Mary and Tamberly. That's what you get. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's all I have for show and tell. Although I have something I can contribute to the transportation whole thing, but that can also wait until next week because we probably won't. Yeah, we're gonna run time. over time because I yeah. took too much time. I'm sorry, you guys. No, no problem. This is this. Is, we'll just kick it down till next week, and then we don't have so, to. So, Mary, do you have show and tell? Besides, but you already sure to tell. I'm eating caramel. Sorry, you guys. That's okay. Milk duds are my favorite. <laughs> I got to take so, um, okay. So I had that, um, the social security thing. And then it sounds like Susan's been on ancestry a lot. I, I, it's my, my ancestry, if it was a thing that could be, it, it would be hot. It'd be heated up. There'd be a little <laughs> out of it. But, but I saw. Com too. I've got like nine tabs open that are all ancestry or newspapers.com or legacy. Oh. Been legacy a lot too. Anyway, so you probably saw, but ancestry will, it said big banner ancestry will be updated even more. Oh, I didn't notice that. So more, with even crazy. more precision in September. Oh, tell me. I didn't see that. It was just the banner on the top when you open up Ancestry.com. Does it give you any details? No. It was just a teaser. Yeah, I just go to, I don't, I don't ever look at Ancestry. I just go to right to. Here, yeah, I'll look. Mm. Okay. Hey, yeah, open up a ninth tab, Susan. <laughs> Coming soon, Ancestry DNA results will be updated with even more precision this September. Yeah. So it's DNA. Okay. I want them to get more, more. Oh yeah, Ancestry DNA. That was kind of important. <laughs> they should get the SS5s in here. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> well, they do have social security applications, I think. It's just yeah, that it but, have I want to just look it up. It doesn't have the whole thing, is what they're saying. That's why it's worth spending the twenty-seven. What do you think they're going to have? That's going to be more precise on the DNA. Well, they they did that. Oh, no, I was years ago, right? Security. They'll just they 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 Never can pinpoint more where maybe you know because more people Irish, uploaded. Are you Northern Irish and or Southern? More Irish. people we have that do their DNA. Yeah. The narrower it gets. It depends on, you know, one of the things I've been really trying to do is get more out into some of the cultures that are not necessarily doing their DNA, like, you know, from Vietnam and India and right. them. So our stuff probably won't change. Maybe. Hmm. I think it more Pat's over the years has been okay, September. moved from Ireland to, he's got a whole um, Northern, not Northern Ireland, uh, Donegal, County Donegal. He's got half of his ancestors went through the County Donegal. And so it's beginning to show up as a DNA place in Ireland. Wasn't it September that it, was it last year or the year before? It was when we were before pandemic, because I remember we were at your house, Cindy, and we were looking at the DNA. And yeah, no, it's all the that. Scottish yeah. stuff showed up. And we we're like, whoa, right. well, look how much Scottish. It was like 15%. Now it's 25%. Yeah, yeah. No, it, they updated. Maybe they're going to update again. I was here when that updated. Yeah. yeah. I remember that discussion. Yeah. Okay. I'm screen sharing again. Um, okay. Uh, Facebook. So this Facebook woman in, in Irolo, Switzerland, you know, she still lives there. Her grand father was the father-in-law of my great grandma oh it, lord you lost we're not blood related in any way but she st has a lot of information because she's always lived there and she's female and you know so mm -hmm. um so she sent just the cutest picture um 
the day before to come to California, your father, she met my grandfather though, brought my mother to Canaria. So this is just this little area. I'm just like, oh wow. Gosh, this this oh. is like one of the last things my grandfather places he, he you know he saw before he left like I'm just like I don't know somehow this very much touches me and um so then she's and she's just like so amazing like her and my mother send Christmas cards to each other and and she's she writes like the way we like to to hear like um information you know so i said um something about oh because then she put like a mark on it was the same picture but she put a mark and i'm like well what's that mark for because she didn't specify and then so she answers sorry not your father but your grandfather the white markings where my mother lived during the summer they went there with the cows and i'm sure that's goats my brother franco and his son Ivano Beffa goes there in the spring and autumn with the cows before they bring the cows um, out of the Alps on the Alps and as the cows in September come back from the Alps so they take them there in the spring and bring them back in the fall. Canaria is about eight kilometers away from Madrano. So Madrano is where my grandfather lived. It's just like right near Irolo but it's like a tiny berg and this canaria is just like maybe it's like you know how we would say south salinas or alisal or oh that close so anyway i'm just like oh my gosh thank goodness you know that i have this woman that shows me this stuff you know i mean she is telling me things about my family and and stuff but um well, that's exciting. It's yeah. Exciting when you find somebody else who cares. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, that was it from show and tell. I have that's you know, great. Have, uh, Those are wonderful. You know what I was thinking about what Cindy said last week about travel. And that just connects to me what you just said, Deirdre, is that um, you know, I was thinking about Mark's family coming from Norway. And when they took the the when they made the decision, we're going to America. It was like, they may never, ever see this place again. And any of the people in this area and anybody who's left oh. behind may never be seen again. And what, sure. what strength of character or desperation or, um, oh yeah, what that must be to say, I, and, and they didn't have cameras like we had now. So it wasn't like, you know, you could say, I'm going to try to make a video of this area <laughs> before I leave. So I'll look it up on Google earth. <laughs> no, you're 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 like yeah take a look at it really oh. amazing place i lived for whatever reason i'm leaving it i'm leaving it by great grandma bye grandma have a good life i will never see you again bye you exactly. know yeah. think about that sure. oh yeah lots of people oh my god and they must have been close to their families you would think because you know you really depend on your family for a lot of resources and stuff yeah. I mean, there must have been a huge pull to come to America to make you leave all that. Well, well you know, financial is a, a big motivator. You know, the third son doesn't get any of the property and, you know, his choice is to be a priest or a soldier or go to America. So. Yeah. And, and I have to say, you know, my relatives that came over in the 1900s, they already had extended family mm -hmm. here yeah i mean that's true but that's the pool too you know, they probably weren't going to see you know the odds are pretty pretty high they weren't going to see be able to go back but they were going to see they did have cousins or whatever here yeah blood yeah that's true that's true so yeah but still, still a decision did i tell you Oh, it probably been a couple of weeks ago. I gave the book to my dad now, but it was in the, oh yes, I think I did. It was in the Herald, this retired policeman in Monterey. He wrote a book about his mother who was 
and he he's Drago is his last name. D R A G O. I might have seen this. I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, his mom. They're Russian. His mom came from Russia. They mm, emigrated from Russia, but you know it was one of those. Uh, you know they had to leave or they'd be killed by the Bolsheviks because the family was white Russian. So they they ended up in Japan. So his mother was in Hiroshima when the bomb. Oh, I did see this article. Okay. Oh my gosh. Review of it in the, in the That's Herald. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, I don't know if it's interesting to everybody, but you know, from us who are totally into the genealogy, it's just like, oh my gosh. And I mean, and I know other Russians who went to China and it's what these people, these immigrants, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're pretty spoiled over here, aren't we? Yeah. With my milk duds and my cat. <laughs> <laughs> we're zooming on a computer in climate controlled houses. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That was all. Okay. okay. All right. So, what time do you have to leave that therapy? Uh, a few, a little bit before three. So, and I have to leave it about quarter of three so we have a half hour so should we just do one person and or two 15 minute ones um Barely, can you do yours in 15 minutes i could try I to do, my do mine in probably even less than that um well why don't you rock and roll and then be mary and mary and um okay so i called my parents and i'm like listen <laughs> you got Hot homework. Think about this. Me. Discuss it. Argue among yourselves, and then call me back. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Good I'm approach. like, I need to. I want to know. Do you know how Omi and Opa, my dad's German parents, and Grandma and Grandpa came from New York City, from Ellis Island to California? Did, how did they get there? No transporter. Right. Transportation. <laughs> Transportation. So a day goes by. They didn't call me back. So I call them back. I'm like, did you decide on an answer? <laughs> and I'm like, are you done discussing? <laughs> they were hoping you forgot. <laughs> we did. So um, she said, he, and, and I had at this point done some research and while I can't verify 100% that it's true, the, my mother's pretty darn sure that they took the train from New York and my grandfather, um, well, at least my grandmother when she came, when because they had gone back and the, her dad came, they had gone back to Italy, then she, then he came back and then they, my grandmother and two of her siblings came. And of course, we're really very horrified because my grandmother had a terrible sense of direction and <laughs> she was only 17 and the other siblings were younger. And- They live in Florida? How my grandfather knew to pick what day to pick them up in San Francisco. So we're pretty much sure that it was a train and it went to San Francisco and her grandfather picked him up in San Francisco because she knows that part. And we're assuming that it was by telegraph because how else, you know, could it be? Is there a way to hear records? No, probably not, huh? I found uh, Jerry Andrews has some telegrams that I found that people had sent him, usually from other countries. So I think they were like in the fifth. Telegraph is possible, yeah. I mean, yeah, because he just had copies of them, so I don't know how you would retrieve we, them. We know how Amtrak runs. You know, I mean, if there's a snowstorm or, you know, the train gets delayed for whatever reason, somebody runs into it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, right? Not so my family. Not my, not my family. Thank you. <laughs> There's a predicted schedule of when they would arrive, and right, but I, he can't just sit up in San Francisco. Like, I guess he could sleep in the car. Yeah. But, but oh, this is my presentation, huh? Okay, so 
information. Heyday. I mean, it was the peak of tra rail transportation in 1923. But anyway, I'll get to that. Then my grandparents from Germany, <coughs> my dad said that my grandfather landed in New York City on, uh, I mean, he has a date, February 1928. And, but he said, his dad said, he came through Mexico to Los Angeles. Mexico? I can see how that works. But I mailed a letter today. I wrote a letter <laughs> and mailed it out. <laughs> Everybody turned to <laughs> cousin of his that has a good memory um, to see if she knows information because he traveled with an uncle from Germany, which I don't think I knew that. And so I'm hoping she will have um, information because it was on her mom's side and her, you know, they kind of were, you know, would have any records or things like that. And she always lived with her parents. I mean, she's in her seventies. And um, so she obviously heard family tales far more than my father who you know moved out and when he was 20 or whatever Mexico? why would they go through mexico well so i'm trying to recall and i, I can't fight but i did research um for a gravestone uh having to do with mary a long time ago and her husband or her yeah her husband he came to los angeles across the Mexico border. And oh. I'm trying to recall how, did he land in New Orleans or did he, I, I, I just, I can't quite remember it. But oh. it could be that, that your grandfather took the, I don't know. I mean, that's a, could have taken another boat to New Orleans or to Galveston or something like that and took a train across Mexico. Um, Whatever was the cheapest, I'm pretty darn sure. <laughs> you know, or took the southern <laughs> train to. Uh, um, Did he want to see America or something before he got here, or take the long long route? Long route, or is a really pretty woman on the train and <laughs> your home? Or I I don't know, but he say it again. What you said? He he arrived from Mexico. Yes. I mean, this is like, I'm sorry, but this is my grandfather's words, not my yeah. father's. But he said you know, he was a wet back. I mean, maybe he came illegally. No, because he came into New York because my dad has the records, he says, on him arriving. So then that, so he was joking that that's how he got in. And that... well, can you get, if you arrive in New York? Can they, I mean, you're vetted before you get on the boat. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, you know, it's probably, there's probably some family letters somewhere. Somebody wrote a letter talking about these things. It might not have been from one person. It might've been, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? He had yeah. to travel all the way through Mexico because there was a storm or something and I mean, there. Somebody wrote that story down somewhere in some letter. You have his, you have his arrival records in in uh, New York. I don't. But I'm my, sorry, Derek Reed. Do you have his arrival records? In New York? My dad says he does. This was like all new because I've totally just been yes. focusing on you know Marguerite, and and now I'm kind of intrigued by this story, and I yeah. haven't had time to follow up because. Now that I know he has a traveling partner, his uncle, <laughs> the uncle did not go to LA. Cause I'm like, I, I mean, I, I see this Warmuth, this last name, 
in my DNA matches, but there were no war moose when I grew up. There are no cousins, no, you know. So I wonder if he went with the uncle, maybe he went with the uncle to New Orleans or near New Orleans where his had, because they were all sponsored. Oh, that's true. They were all sponsored. So they couldn't, they couldn't be illegal. Yeah. Right. So they were legally brought here. Right. So you have some homework. Yes. It, it, it made work. work. Or, you know, I mean, it, it, so it opened the door. Yeah. To, they wanted to go to Hollywood <laughs> and see the stars. No, no. He knew he was going to LA. I drops. I'll be back. Oh. Okay. Anyway, okay, the sequel were for that. Hopefully we'll be next week, right? Okay, so that's that. that. Really interesting. So. It was interesting, I thought. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up something. So, I mean, I Googled about the train. Central Pacific Railroad Photographic History Museum. Ooh. But look at here's the question in 1923 I didn't make it up but somebody else did and it was like my question practically in 1923 what train would an Ellis Island passenger use to get from Island New York to Sacramento what would it cost how long would the train trip be would they use open train cars oh, I never even thought about that how, how can I find oh out more wow so the Kevin Bunker from Oregon, it turns out he's from Oregon. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry to read it aloud, but I shall. You can follow. Right. <laughs> By night, you can hear me, Cindy, right? Yes. By 1923, which is when my grandfather came, transcontinental passenger service was at its near peak in terms of the number of trains and the qualities of service available to the public. Um, yeah. much of your answers are complicated that the gal asked and depend on the would be emigrees financial means and ethnic or national origins. While we assume most immigrants arriving in New York would typically be lower middle class. Yes. <laughs> for mine in the 1920s, there were fewer, very poor immigrants. Well, okay. Yes. I mean, I guess they weren't like horribly, horribly, horribly poor still they may well have used a substantial portion of their means to pay the transatlantic steamship fare yes <laughs> for mine i would expect an average european emigrant to be somewhat frugal yes mine and <laughs> seek out the cheapest possible railroad fares of course these are men they're 17 19 years old they, they don't need luxury by 1923, two railroads with direct connections to the Eastern Seaboard served Sacramento. The Southern Pacific Company, successor to the Central Pacific of the 19th century, and the newer Western Pacific Railroad. I, Deirdre didn't even know there was a Western Pacific. Did you guys? Mm -mm. Yeah. The Western Pacific was a very modest and much smaller railroad connecting San Francisco, Oakland with Salt Lake City, Utah. At which point, of course, it met Denver and the Rio Grande. Um, da, 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 da. Nevertheless, Southern Pacific's direct tie with the Union Pacific mainline in Ogden, Utah, allowed someone traveling from New York and Chicago, which was, and Chicago was a Midwest common change of trains point, to reach California most efficiently. I'm pretty sure they probably did the most efficient when they can't speak the language. Right. Mm -hmm. A passenger could also reach the West Coast through St. Louis, avoiding Chicago from New York, but that was slower and more indirect. Um, so um, your hypothetical passenger could travel second class, meaning by day coach, all the way with no sleeping accommodations and thus travel most cheaply. Or if they had more funds for some extra comfort, they would pay the standard coach fare and add on a first class fare um, for sleeping car service. I, yeah, I just don't know. So the train only ran during the day? No, that doesn't make sense. So couldn't they have slept in their seats if they? 
I would have thought because let me tell you, I said the rain at night Oregon a couple of years, two, three years ago. Um, and I was in business class. Mm. Uh, I, w- I was not even in second class. Well, maybe it was third class. I don't know. It sounds like they, the second class moved at night. They had some kind of bed. Isn't that the way you're reading it? Well, if they had a sleeping car, so that you would travel during the day sitting in your seat, but right. you could add right. on a bed of sorts. Because I remember a lot of the British yeah. shows, they have like these in the corridor, it's it's like just a curtain and a bed. And then somebody underneath had a curtain and a bed and somebody underneath that had a curtain, like bunk okay. beds in the, in the oh. corridor. I'm sure it'd been really low price. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, I was surprised they even- It wasn't a room or anything. Yeah. yeah. So you so, might've been able to add that on at night if you, for a, you would think. Right. But I, if you really feel frugal, I would think you'd just say, no, fine. I'm gonna sleep right here in my seat. Right. So it, they said um, a total trip time from New York to Sacramento, which I imagine. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the train doesn't even go to San Francisco today. You have to go to. Um, oh my yeah, god! But it went to San Francisco before. There, oh, okay. There was a train track across the Oakland Bay Bridge. I remember oh. it. Yeah, I, I just said that my grandfather picked him up in San Francisco, so sure. So um, it said a total time from New York to Sacramento could take anywhere from four to five days, allowing for some layovers for changing trains, you know, typically Chicago or St. Louis. Changing trains wasn't always required, especially for the wealthy. Well, I don't think that's happening, but it happened. But so that was interesting, four or five days. Um so they would stop, would they have to stop in towns and sleep in a, somewhere in the town and then get back no. on a train oh. the next day or no? Oh. Mm. Maybe they had a, like I if a train a stopped, they might've had to get off and then sit around for a few hours before the train they're waiting for that's gonna go a different direction maybe, but I doubt they'd have to get a hotel or something. No, they probably were just in the lobby waiting. Yeah. So um, fair, fares varied and were seasonal then as now. Um, so how much it costs, there's no easy answer. But there's like um, 1,200 pages if you look on the records, which are, uh, yeah, that it would, and they're not well organized. But one of the best ways for the general public to get a basic idea of fares is to consult historic newspapers on microfilm at a major library, paying close attention to railroad advertisements. Um, Oh, you would do very well to contact the very well-equipped California State Railroad Museum Library in Sacramento. There we go. I was literally had lunch like across the street from it a couple weeks ago. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, a public reference library maintains a treasure trove of historic railroad public timetables. So yeah, and open cars were extremely rare by the 1920s. It never even dawned on me they'd be coming in an open car. Open car, what does that mean? Like the, it's open? Uh, Well, I just rode like the little V&T railroad in Virginia City a week and a half ago and it didn't have a top. I mean, you know, one, you, there were two different sections. You could go in the one with the top, like a normal rail car, and then one didn't have a top. I just assume that's what they meant. Why, maybe. why would that exist for passengers going from New York to San Francisco? That there's weather and oh yeah, my grandfather came. You know, at the beginning of January, there's like no way. I mean, no way. <laughs> why, that doesn't make sense. Why would you even have a train? I mean, if you're going in a beautiful area with trees and you're just doing something scenic okay i got it but why would a railroad say let's build a car that has no top to it but it does have seats in it i thought first when you said open that it meant you could sit where you wanted like a open seating oh no 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 and he says about about the only open air cars one ever saw in the 1920s were the very few summer only scenic viewing cars. So, okay, so that does make sense. And not, well, yeah. so anyway. So back, 
back to the original question then is the one set of people took the train. Yes. The other, your grandfather, was grandmother with him? No, they were, no. He came with his uncle. He was unmarried. He was oh, that's right. 19. Okay. So when did she come then? She came, she may have even come earlier because she was only five when she came with okay. her parents. Um, yeah, well, hopefully this cousin will have yeah, it's a more information. information. So fascinating. It is, but I'm also thinking, hello. <laughs> like, why would I not like ask my grandparents this? Or, you know, I mean, and maybe I did and it was just like, oh, they took the train. Okay. You know, like in my youthfulness, it was just like, yeah, well, of course it's Amtrak, whatever, you know. Yeah, it flew in a plane. <laughs> but I, I mean, they did not speak English. <laughs> They did yeah. not speak English and the people they were with did not speak English. So I don't know how they managed. I, I, it was probably by telegraph from the relatives that were here, told them, take this train. Right. It's going to cost this much. Yeah. 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 There's there probably other way. people that they met up with that spoke, you know, they, you look around, you walk around enough until you find somebody who speaks that language. You can understand what they're saying. You're like, hey, hey. <laughs> maybe, maybe they had translators. I could use a little help there. I could use a little help. Can you help me here? They must have had translators at Ellis Island because how, wh 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 how are you going to get the information from these right. people prodding you? What's your name? They're not going to know what's your name in English. And they, no. Yeah. I'm telling, no, my, they do not speak English. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, maybe your parents will, you know, remember something else, a little, another little detail or. Yeah. But especially find that letter. There's a letter. Like, I know there's a letter somewhere. <laughs> That's right. But maybe even a photo. No, I doubt there's a photo. But that picture, there's a letter of somebody saying that, oh, so-and-so told me oh, about how they got here and, and, and some of the adventures they had or something. Oh, and my, my German grandmother, she, we gave her a book, you know, grandma remembers and she did a fantastic job. I wonder if I will go back and revisit and see if she did say something. Oh, because oh. yeah, because a lot of those books will give you questions, to, you know, like huh. write out things saying, you know, that they will prompt you to answer these kind yeah. of questions we want to know answers yeah. to. Okay, go ahead, Cindy. No, that, that's, you. Um, <laughs> it's already, what time is it? Oh, 25. Um, no, I, I'm going to wait and do it next week. Okay. I, what I was going to, I added on to myself. You know, you all had your homework and I took on roads. And, but I think it's longer than the 10 okay. minutes. That Mine that is probably, on. well, yeah. Mine's going to be 15 or 20, 15 or minutes or so. So we'll yeah. away. but mine was, it was, it was interesting. I, I did mine, not exactly on the roads, but more of the migration from the North Carolina, Virginia, and why people moved. I, I called mine push and pull. What was it that was pulling them in to the South, from, Southwest from the established colonies of like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and stuff like that. And it, I found, I found a whole bunch of stuff. So that sounds super interesting. But it wasn't, it wasn't as, as detailed as uh, Deirdre's where she got some. Um, that was just, train. I started with the train stuff, trying to find train information. It was so confusing because there wasn't, I don't know the direct names and stuff. There's so many ways. And then um, also, I read an article that was talking, calling it the Great Migration, what I'm going to talk about. And so I said, awesome, the Great Migration. I, I was the first part of the Great Migration. So I went on to Wikipedia thinking there's going to be a Wikipedia page about that. There's Great mi Migrations all over the world. And they're all, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing on the one I went. I'm like, fine, just fine. So I, I, 
I had to kind of put things together, but I do have some stuff that, it's, yeah, like it'll be 15 minutes. But Mary's early. has train stuff for that area. Yeah, and Tamberley's doing trains, right? Or is that Mary? Uh, canals. 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 Yeah. Mary's yeah. doing trains. Yeah, so she, maybe she covered it. Well, yeah. Okay, here's what I propose. Because <laughs> I know I have to leave in a, in a little bit. And I'm thinking maybe we could stop at this point yeah. and start next week going back to Susan and Mary and Tamberly and that I can drop in my little bit about trains but try, I know I try to keep uh, I mean not trains short. but roads the, the road system so yeah we'll try to do a shorter um show and tell show and tell unless it's like specific specific yeah and then yeah. hopefully they have listened to this interview this uh this talk and then um yeah, I think that's a good idea because that way I can get myself something to eat and then I can get on to this. Yeah, calls this guy and I know I'm already half, half the way out the door, so I have trouble concentrating. On okay. All righty. Well, that's so all I'll do. I'll send an email out with this video in a couple hours and, um, and tell people Mary and, and uh, Tamberly if they want to watch it. Okay. And, I and then we'll go ahead and continue with this next week. It, you guys, it was really interesting, the video from last week. And I, I should have wrote notes, but, you know, I always think, oh, I'm going to remember and comment yeah. on everything. It was really, everything was really interesting. Are you trying to talk to the screen? Like, <laughs> yeah, kind of. I think so. <laughs> Are you trying to unmute yourself? <laughs> it's like we've opened up. Why can't screen. they hear me? Why can't they hear me? Am I on mute? It is weird. I agree. But it's like we've opened up this whole thing about, well, okay they landed and then what yeah <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't oh yeah it's very interesting and and i did at the end of the email that i wrote to you guys yesterday i i put that question it's in my notes somewhere here right i if really wanted to think about what was that i said how to word it i can look oh what's next to our for our future concerning travel i thought that was yeah. interesting. oh yeah what what do we you know how do we even know <laughs> yeah well how do you know but some of the things that are going to happen and how will that i was thinking how will it change our cultures a little bit if we if they get to a point where they can propel us into um into the atmosphere and then come back down that's like a they say that'll make every destination 45 minutes away <gasps> they go up and then the earth turns underneath them they go up the earth turns underneath you and then they come mm -hmm. straight down and then you can end up in australia in 45 minutes everything will be 45 minutes away oh. so that's one of the things you know with all these spacex things and stuff like that once it becomes safe i i'd like to see those days myself but that is if everything is 45 minutes away can you imagine how our lives will change because <laughs> well just yeah, completely here we'll be so much more multicultural because we'll be like oh <laughs> you know i really like to have salmon for dinner tonight let's go to you know <laughs> you know you're just there and you're down so quickly oh uh, you know let's let's go get something on the barbie in australia and you're there so uh, i want chinese food from china <laughs> <laughs> how much more how much of a difference if that is possible you know it seems like it's inevitable mm -hmm. it, the, the you know they've got the technology they just it's not there yet but i don't know okay. i thought that was an interesting discussion question for some day we could yes uh, ponder all right all well, right i'll end this i'll let it I'll, I'll let it uh ruminate into the okay. and i'll stick it up on youtube and then and then i'll send you a link you guys Okay. okay. Hopefully, right. hopefully Mary's right. got some stuff about her pictures. I'm dying to see. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.